survivors. No, sir. Captain, my foot is caught in some of the wreckage. It's, it's pulling me under. Hold on. Ridley! black sails against the yellow indy sky. I knew again the stench of powder and men's brains and war. Waves about me were scarlet, foamy, horribly warm in the freighter's wake. In despair, I offered my weathered soul to Almighty God, His mercy, and His judgment. She had borne me through seas of blood. Her damp embrace had prevented me from drifting beyond reach. Yet this small comfort was all I could offer. One of my crew lay ahead. Birds were eating his thoughts and memories. Wait, no! In hell, at least the gulls are contented. For my part, I beg that they should take my eyes, thus sparing me future horror. I thought of my family, my wife, my daughters, vulnerable, unsuspecting. Awaiting my return, only to be met by damnation bearing down upon them. Everything I lived for depended on my reaching home in advance of that terrible freighter. The morning sun found me no less troubled. Further down the shore, some of my crew had become inflated with gas. I shuddered at my own idea, attempting to banish this repulsive notion. Even in death, they sought to fulfill their duty, making our vessel more buoyant. 
And I would do my duty to them in returning them home. Rudely jarring my men from eternal rest, and laying them in the bed I prepared, I hoped my wife and daughters might be tucked in by gentler hands when their turn came. With the dawn came the gulls, looking for breakfast. Ridley! I was reminded that I myself had not eaten. I know, it is not appetizing, but it is all we have. Whoever we are, wherever we reside, we exist on the whim of murderers. I hardly recognized my old friend Ridley. I could not bring myself to tell him he was a horrible reflection of his former self. I really must get him home before... before he gets any worse. Before he succumbs. I've heard that in less than a pint daily, a man might survive drinking salt water. Captain, what are you doing, Captain? I'm headed for Davidstown. That's what. I, I need to warn. To warn everyone. <laughs> you think you'll reach Davidstown in advance of the Black Freighter? Isolation has made you mad, Captain. Mad indeed. But we must try. You are a fool. You alone survived the freighter's attack. Fortune has smiled upon you, and you spit in its face. Turn your wretched craft around and go far away, as far away as you can. No. No, my family. I... I must protect them. The Black Freighter is already there. Your wife, dead. Your children, dead. Shut your mouth. You have failed your family. Like you have failed your crew. Take solace in the fact that I will see my family again in heaven. Heaven? Oh, there is no heaven, Captain. Believe me, sir. I would know by now. Walter Kovacs. No, 
this, my friends. Hades is wet. Hades is lonely. And in that instant, we knew each other. My raft had grown increasingly grotesque, reflecting my own transformation. Adrift, my darkest imaginings welled up unchecked, spilling from brain to heart like black ink, impossible to remove. The vessel had surely reached Davidstown already. I pictured quiet streets overrun by the fiends from the Black Freighter. My wife, my children most certainly dead. My crew, dead. The beast I ride on, dead. I'd swallowed too much seawater. I'd swallowed too much horror. God has damned me. God has damned us all. Truly, life is hell, and death's rough hand our only deliverance. I can endure no more. I want to join my family. Desperately. I recognized. A moneylender from Davidstown. With Davidstown certainly captured, why would this scoundrel and his wench be allowed free passage for this midnight tryst? Had he collaborated? Had he betrayed my people? My family? My heart grew cold. 
was my wife comforted before her execution, while this collaborator and his pirate master sneered. My decision was hurried, but not difficult. His head burst as if pressurized by the guilt within. A buccaneer's horn deserves no pity. Two figures had ridden here. Two must ride back. A pirate sentry. I trotted unhurriedly to avoid suspicion. The violation did not stop with the good people of Davidstown, but had cut deeply, infecting my beloved homeland. My Davidstown was not as I last saw it. Already it was afflicted with the curse of the Black Freighter. Soon, I would venture amongst evil men, butchers who now reside in my home, and make them fear me. Upon my return home, I found the streets conspicuously silent. I entered my former residence noiselessly, careful not to rouse the pirate butchers occupying it from their debauched slumber. Unaware that death was amongst them, they would know its dark embrace without ever understanding why. One, however, was awake, frantic. Lest he should raise alarms, I set upon him as he entered the night-wrapped chamber. No pirates come, but something was. I look up into faces familiar, safe for their terror. Through puffed and bloodied lips, she mouthed my name. My love. Why? There came an understanding so large, it left no room for sanity. So I ran. The knowledge of my damnation paced me, shouting, celebrating its awful victory. My deduction was flawless. The Black Freighter was heading to Davidstown. It should have arrived. Can't you just tell me how this all ends and save us? Eventually, I came to a dismal black ocean stretching endlessly before me. How had I reached this appalling position with love, only love, as my guide? The moneylender floated at my feet. Noble intentions had led me to atrocity. The righteous anger fueling my ingenious, awful scheme was but delusion. Where was my error? Planning to resume my flight, I raised my head and saw her. The vessel seemed to be waiting, not hovering to strike. And gradually, I understood what innocent intent had brought me to, and waded out beyond my depth. The unspeakable truth loomed unavoidably before me as I swam towards the anchored freighter. Its dark and lurching mast filled all my vision. All my well-meaning plans had come to this. The world I tried to save was lost beyond recall. A rope snaked down. Sputtering, I grabbed it. And from the decks above, a cheer went up both gross and black its stench affronting heaven. There had been no plan to capture David's town. They'd come to wait until they could collect the only prize they valued. Claim the only soul they truly wanted. I was a horror. Amongst horrors must I dwell.